In this video, we are going to be upgrading the suspension bushings on this C5 Z06. So this kit is going to work from 1997 up to 2013 Corvettes. So this is 138,000 mile Z06 with a Pro Charger kit that we picked up and we are going racing with this thing. So we want this thing to perform as best as possible and it still has the original rubber bushings in it. Ride Tech has came up with a complete kit for us. We've got our instructions here. We've got all of our different bushings laid out. So complete Delrin kit and all of these are marked with where they've got to go. So we've got the part numbers and also says their position. So you can see here C5, C6, front, lower, large, outer, so on and so forth. Also, we're gonna be replacing the joints up in the front uppers. Here's all of our lower stuff and then some hardware as well also we did choose to get the kit tool so this is going to be our bushing removal tool this is going to help with getting um, some of the bushings out as well so let's go ahead let's get this up on the lift pop the wheels off this still is on leafs so we are going to be upgrading to ride tech coilovers but that'll be in a future video this is going to be quite a job just in itself getting all these bushings replaced so i want to focus on that for you guys because you can still run this bushing kit with the original mono leafs which is what is currently in the car so let's get it up and let's get to work so here we go the vehicle's up in the air we're gonna work on one end first so whether that be the front or the rear but uh, we're gonna go ahead and start taking off the front section here so what I am gonna do is we do have to since this still has the OEM factory mono leaf setup you can see here essentially has a big leaf spring but um, we're gonna have to relieve the pressure on that. So what I am going to do is before we start relieving too much pressure is I'm gonna disconnect the sway bar. So sway bar is right here, it's connected on both sides. So we'll uh, take that out first and then essentially we're gonna have to start disconnecting everything because we have to free the upper control arm as well as the lower from everything. And uh, with everything being under tension right now, it's uh, we have to get that tension off of it, which is going to be that leaf spring. But uh, first things first, let's disconnect the sway bar. All right, so to disconnect the sway bar, you're going to need a 18 here and then an Allen in here. And I'll show you a little trick on how to get these off. So let's crack this loose and then I'll show you. So grab your ratchet. It can be electric or not, but electric's gonna make this faster. And we're gonna tighten the Allen while holding this nut after we've cracked it loose. And that way you're not here forever loosening these. All right, so here we go. You could hold it from the back side if you really want to, but I just feel like that's way easier. So there we go. Sway bar is disconnected. And we'll just put the nut back on it so we don't lose it. We'll move on to the next thing. Next up, not completely necessary, but just for simplicity, I'm gonna remove the caliper, the bracket, and the brake rotor. So we've got a 15 here and a 15 down there. You may or may not have to get a wrench in on the actual slider pin because it might spin from the backside. But anyways, we'll take that off. I've already got a little bungee here ready to go so we can support the caliper out of the way so we're not hanging it from the brake line. With the caliper out of the way and suspended, we can remove the two 21 mils. So one here, one there. That'll take off the bracket, but just be aware that your brake rotor is gonna be free hanging once you take this off. And now we can go ahead and take the rotor off. The other thing we'll do is unclip this from the bottom, just uh, less risk of actually breaking it. And we'll just feed it back around here. And it actually just slides out of this little fork. So there, we can completely kind of remove it out of our way just so we don't risk damaging it. Next up, let's disconnect the tie rods. So I'm gonna loosen this, then we'll get a ball joint splitter in here and just split it. Some people will take a, like a dead blow or something to the knuckle. It does work, but it usually kind of mars things up. So we'll go ahead and we'll just use the tool. All right, so our ball joint is removed. So go ahead and do the same thing on the other side. Once you get to that point, then we can go ahead and we can support everything and we can start removing our shock so our shock bolts there's two bolts right here and then there's nuts that go through the bottom here that is what is holding and limiting our control arm from dropping that's what's holding tension on our mono leaf spring here so we got to go ahead and support this and then we can go ahead and loosen these two bolts right here okay so next up i've got our lower control arm supported so we're gonna go ahead and relieve a little bit of tension on this. I also have a safety stand in the back of the vehicle. The vehicle is 
pretty much 50 50 weight distributed vehicle so you don't want to be taking too much weight off the front or the back because uh you could have an issue on the lift so these are 15 so we're going to go ahead and zip these out of here there might be shims behind here so just be aware of that as well And then you'll notice that it's kind of like channeled here, so you kind of have to work it around that area there. So there's a couple shims as you just saw. So I do have some in certain positions here. So just be aware if yours have shims and where the shims are located. So now what we're gonna do is I'm gonna relieve the tension on this. We'll start to bring it down. But you're gonna see that our safety stand is getting loose. It's because the shock is actually holding that spring tension there. So I'm just gonna relieve it a little bit and then we're gonna remove these two shock bolts right here. So it's a 13 mil. And the nuts are from the bottom side. You can take the bolts from the top. You kind of want to remove them because otherwise they'll bind if you try to just let the weight of the vehicle take them off. And now we should be able to lower our support and relieve some of that tension that's on that monoleaf. So you can see here, you don't necessarily have to remove the monoleaf if you don't want to, to do this job. So what we can do now is whether you want to leave it all as one assembly or you wanna separate your upper and lower control arms. But before we take out these two lower control arm bolts, we'll mark where our eccentric bolts are. That way we can get them close. Still gonna need alignment after this, but at least this will put it in a rough position. Okay, so we went ahead and we made a mark for our cam bolts on both of them. So that way we can get it somewhat close once we put this back in here. So 21 mil, will get the job done. So let's loosen these two and get this control arm assembly out of here. Okay, so it's pretty much free. You might have to rotate this cam bolt, but you can get it over top of your monoleaf without too much issue. And then just make sure you keep your orientation for your front cam bolt and your rear. Chances are they are gonna be marked different, so just make sure you keep your orientation front and rear separate. All right, so now this should be free, so we'll work it back and forth a couple times. And she's off. Okay guys, so I just went ahead and did the other side. So I'm only gonna show you guys how to do one side because obviously driver and passenger side is gonna be a mere process from the other side. So I wanted to get all the tools out for you guys, get the process underway. That way I could go with you guys and explain how I got it done. So this is the, obviously I didn't separate the upper and lower. If you guys want to, you can. You can see here that you don't necessarily have to, but what I will tell you is getting a ball joint press is going to be your friend in this case. So this was an absolute breeze when I got this and I'll link this down below for you guys. You guys can pick up a complete ball joint press kit like you see there. It's gonna have everything you need and also I would recommend getting this from Ride Tech because it's the exact size that you need and we'll show you guys that in a second here. So anyways, these are all in here. Um, I'm gonna go ahead and we got the other side right there. I did clean them up a little bit. We'll get that up here in the vise and then I'll start going through the process with you guys on how to get these out. All right, so what I'm using is just a couple blocks of wood just so we're not you know, marking up our control arms even though these things are far from perfect, but just getting it in there and it's you know holding the whole assembly. Like I said, you can split it if you want, but I am choosing not to do that extra work. So we've gotta get these upper joints out. Um, what you're gonna end up doing is you can't really get anything in here to press them out. Um, what I am using is a knife and I'm cutting off the rubber around the side that's gonna slide out. So you can see here, this side has a steel collar, so it's gonna have to come out this way. And I am cutting the rubber around the edge, like you see here, here's the ones that I removed. That way this can slide out. So once you cut the rubber off, then it allows it to slide out easier. Otherwise you're gonna be fighting this big rubber lip, passing it through the actual joint itself. So this makes it a heck of a lot easier. So just take the knife, run it around and cut this off. And I'll show you how I did that as well. Okay, so take your knife and go around like this. It helps to have a nice sharp blade. So you're gonna work it through here. And then I came in top. You may have to do a little bit of sawing action, but come in the top 
and then you're gonna cut that chunk out like that. So you get a nice cut this way, cut that way so that it pops out and just go around the whole perimeter. Like I said, just sawing it off. So like that, and a little saw action that way until you get it all removed so that this is gone. All right, so once you get that all removed, what we are gonna do is use a little bit of WD-40 just to help this come out. So we'll spray it on both sides. If you wanna try and do this before to kinda give it a chance to try to penetrate through here. And then what we're gonna do next is you can take a screwdriver or I've got this large punch here and you're gonna start working the bushing. So we're gonna go ahead and start turning it and at the same time pushing outwards. So. So you can see here it's already starting to come out. It does take a little bit of force, so this is why you want to have a vise. But you can see there the bushing's dropping down. And if you try to leave that lip on there, this would be fighting you the entire time. So you can see at the bottom here, the bushing's starting to come out. A little more sauce. Just makes things rotate out of here a little easier. Plus when you go to clean out the arm, it helps not to have a bunch of rubber smeared on the inside. There you go, now it's really starting to come out. And using that method, really not that bad at all you guys. So you can see there less than a couple minutes and this is out. Okay, so I'm gonna go ahead and do the same thing with this side, it's the same procedure. Um, I'm gonna get this out and then we can have both of our upper control arm ready to go. Okay, so we've got both of them removed. So what I'm gonna do now is uh, just take a little bit of Scotch-Brite pad, clean up the bores, just make sure there's, usually there's gonna be a tiny little bit of rubber stuck in there. So just kind of clean up all of your faces. Also, the faces are important. Mine aren't too bad, but you wanna make sure there's no junk on the faces because you want the bushing to be able to fully seat in so that you're not fighting it later to get it in the pocket for the control arm. So we'll clean everything up just with this. Make sure it's all good to go and then we'll move on to putting the bushing in. All right, so all of our bores are cleaned out and let me show you guys the different components that we need to put the new Delrin bushings in here. So I've got everything, of course, laid out on the table. I've already got some of the bushings out and open from the other side. But what you're gonna do is, if you ever get confused, look at this diagram here and look at the corresponding numbers so that you can know which one. So in this case, we need four number fives and it'll give you the part number. So we can go over here, which in this case is this. I've got four more left. So we need four of these and then we need two number tens. These ones are pretty obvious because they're just the last two that look like this. So we need those. We also need a couple washers. So our washers, here's our remaining two washers that we need with the corresponding part number. And then last but not least, we need these two C-clips. So that's what's gonna hold everything together on the other side of the washer. So let's bring all those parts back over to our workbench. Let's get those on. All right, so these guys are pretty self-explanatory. There's no inner or outers on the front uppers. So we're just gonna slide these into place, squeeze them in as far as you can with your hands. So what we're gonna do now is squeeze these together. You could easily throw it in the vise, which uh, we might actually do, but um, what I'm finding easier is just to hold the arm itself since we have the whole assembly on it. This is where I'm using my ball joint press and just cinching them together. Here we go with the ball joint press. So these ones are fairly simple. We'll just cinch them together. And that's it. All right, and that side's done. Next up is to install our insert. So the collared side is gonna go on the outside of the arm. Um, Delrin bushings don't require any lubricant, but I am putting just a light film on things just to help ease the installation. And uh, I just don't wanna tear anything up. Again, completely controversial whether you do or don't wanna use, you're not required to, but um, that's just the practice that I'm doing is just to put light film, just allow everything to slide together nice. But you don't necessarily need any grease or lubrication on these joints. So what we're gonna do is uh, we'll get this situated here and then we'll press it in. All right, so what I'm doing is using my ball joint press. It's got the open end here so that the joint can pass through it. Kind of a little bit of juggling here, but it does work very well. How easy was that, you guys? So, like I said, you kind of have to balance this on the end of it, but when you get it right, it goes in 
so easily. Like, I don't think it gets any easier than that. So I'm gonna go ahead and do the same to this other joint. Doesn't get any easier than that. Next up, we're gonna take our washer, place it on top. Then you're gonna take your C-clip with your C-clip pliers. I'll also link these down below if you don't have a set. Don't get the adjustable ones, the ones that have five million different ends. Those will make you absolutely crazy. Get yourself, it doesn't have to be expensive, but get yourself a decent set that has like a dedicated handle and you can't remove the tips because otherwise, like I said, you'll you'll go crazy. So that's it, that's installed. You can do the same thing on this side, put the washer, C-clip, and then the upper control arm's done. All right, so we got our front lower control arm in the vise here. And what I'm going to do on this one is there's not a ton of a lip here, but you're going to notice that the rubber right here is kind of shielding the lip here. And one of the things is we need to fit this tool over top. If we were to just press it in, it's going to get stuck in our tool and it's going to kind of fight it and it's going to be trying to push it off this lip. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to cut this ridge off. We're going to end up doing the same thing on this side. So on the side that we're pressing the bushing into, so we're going to be going up this way, we're going to cut this rubber lip off and that'll give us a nice seat on the control arm to be able to press off of. All right, so this is what I was talking about. So now with all of that trimmed away, we can actually put this sleeve over top and it sits nicely on top and it's not gonna get stuck in our sleeve when we press it out. All right, and again, using our ball joint press, this is the combo. So we got our ball joint press. We just got the actual arm pushed in on that, nothing in between. We've got the Ride Tech specific sleeve here. And then we've got the ball joint press coupling here just to center everything up. We're gonna drive it home. All right, just like that, you guys. Super simple when you've got the right tools for the job. And since we shaved off the edge of it, it comes in and out of our collar perfectly. All right, so that is all removed. Looks beautiful. We're gonna do the same thing with the bottom. So we're gonna cut this part of the bushing off. That way this from our ball joint press kit can fit over top. As you can see, the rubber's getting in the way from it being able to rest on the actual control arm. So we'll cut that all away and then this will fit beautifully. All right, and with that all cut, like I was mentioning, now we can fully seat this properly on the actual shoulder of the arm and let's press it out. All right, so same deal here. I'm just gonna use this electric ratchet. Hopefully it has enough torque and we're just gonna press the bushing out into this cup. And that is it, you guys. It does not get any easier, I'm telling you. So we'll just wiggle out the rest of the way out. And there she is. So now I'm just gonna spend a few minutes cleaning up our surfaces here, get all of our bores all nice and cleaned up, and then we can put the new bushings in. All right, so our bores are all nice and clean. Let's go ahead and go over to the bushings that we have laid out, because this is where it gets a little bit different. There's an inner and an outer for the big, larger bushing, and then an inner and an outer for also the smaller bushing. All right, so we can refer to our diagram here or we can go over here and we can look and it says front, lower, small, inner. So let's go ahead, we'll grab this one. We'll bring this over. So this is the front control arm, this is the lower control arm, and this is the inner bushing. So we're gonna put that there in place. I don't wanna mix them up, so we're gonna do one at a time. So we'll kind of just get that seated. So front, lower, smaller, inner. Now let's go ahead and we'll get the outer because the shoulder on it is actually gonna be thicker based on the same offset that the factory bushing was. So front, lower, small, outer. This is the other one we need. Grab that one. So you'll notice that the shoulder on this one is much thicker, so the offset's a little different. And that's gonna go on the outside of our control arm. So now let's go ahead and squeeze them down and press these in. Okay, so we got a ball joint press in place here. Let's go ahead and cinch these in. There we have it. Before we put the inner sleeve in here, let's go ahead and do the same thing here. Coming back to here, we've got front, lower, large, outer. So this is gonna have the thicker shoulder. So front, lower, large, outer, that'll go there. Let's go get the inner. So here we go, front, lower, 
large inner. And this one's got the thinner shoulder. So we'll go ahead and get this situated. So those are hand tight. Now let's press them in with the ball joint press. All right, and that's it. So now we need to get our sleeves. Let's go over and refer to the instructions. So the instructions show we need two number 14s. They're both identical. When we go down to 14, it shows the part number 544. Head over to our parts, 544, so we need two of these sleeves. Okay, so we got our sleeve ready to go. Ball joint press rigged up. Let's put it in. And that's it, she's in. All right, so we've got the bushings in, so that's how it looks all installed. Super clean looking. I can't wait to get this stuff in the vehicle. Um, so that's that. Let's go ahead and we'll move on to the rear. Okay, so we're working on the rear right now. We got some tools laid out. I wanna try and see if we can accomplish something. If you'll notice, obviously the rear has the axles in it and to separate the axles and there's a lot of extra stuff going on here. I want to see if potentially we can do this on the vehicle with our ball joint press. If I can swing this arm out here, use a ball joint press, press the old one out, press the new one in, this is gonna hold it in place. So we're gonna try it. Worst comes worst, we end up taking the whole assembly off. What I just started doing was disconnecting this side in preparation to show you guys. So I took out the shock bolts, I took off the sway bar end link, and then I took out the leaf. So what I did was I supported the leaf, I put pressure upwards, because this is essentially trying to pull down the whole time, put pressure upwards with our safety stand, and then removed the bolt. So the bolt was an 18 mil head and then a 21 mil nut on the top, and there was a little c-clip on it right here so this c-clip holds it because there is some adjustment that you can have there remove that c-clip and then that bolt that holds your mono leaf in so now this is free but i got to do the other side so i'm gonna go ahead and start doing the same thing so we'll take off our shock bolts so this is a 24 on both sides so 24 mil takes your shock bolt out we're gonna go ahead 18 here and then you'll see there the nut so that's a 21 mil head nut along with the little c-clip on top that holds the nut from coming off We'll support this and take that off and then we're going to take off this end link and we'll be in the same situation as the other side so let's get to it okay so the c-clip is removed we're going to put our 21 mil wrench there got this supported with our safety stand and then we're going to hit this with our 18 mil gun here well, there it is pretty uneventful which is nice there's the nut and then if we pull this bushing off the top then our bolt should be mostly free but might be in the way of the safety stand but there we go there's the bolt and then we can lower our safety stand or whatever you're using maybe a jack just to relieve that mono leaf spring pressure so now let's bolt those nuts removed take off our sway bar end link all right so i've got that side out this is just sitting here it's uh, not in use at the moment Okay, well I'm super excited to tell you guys that uh, I just tested it out on this side and it worked beautifully. So managed to just drop the lower control arm out of the way, swing it into easy access territory on the lower ball joint. And yeah, I ended up pressing out the old ones, pressing out the new ones, and it was super easy. So now I can literally just swing this back in here, put it back up, put my bolts back in, and uh, we're done. So I'm gonna go ahead and show you guys the complete process on the other side, and we'll get it done. So first things first, what we're gonna do is just mark our eccentric bolt so that we can put this back in the rough area. And then what we're gonna do is, since this is pretty much free, we've gotta loosen this bolt, so remove this bolt. So over here is an 18 mil. On this side here is a 15 mil head bolt. Here we've got a 21 and a 21. So you can actually, I thought maybe we were gonna get into the tank, but this bolt hole is slotted this way. So you can actually manipulate it to get it through and around the tank. So thankfully, the engineers allowed us to do that because I was gonna be cursing if we had to drop the whole subframe just to get this bolt out. So right here, this is what I was mentioning, is it's slotted that way. So you'll see, you'll be like, oh no, the boat's not gonna come out. And then if you turn it, put the bigger end there, you can manipulate it to get it out. So you kind of just wiggle it this way, 
you might have to push the whole control arm like here just to shove it all the way in and then this bolt you can work it out like this so it's a tight fit but it does come out so like I said you might have to just put pressure here wiggle it and you can get it past the tank one last thing I will recommend is just take off your brake caliper because otherwise your brake line will be under some stress so I'll pop this off as well so it's two 15 mil head bolts we can pop off the brake caliper okay so brake calipers off and out of the way supported so let's go ahead and we'll wiggle this out you may need to use a pry bar to get these out of here it's free so now we can swing this over here tons of room to work on it all right so these are actually surprisingly a little easier to work with so here is our tool and it fits right over top of the rubber bushing and up against so you can see there, it's easily able to fit over top. Same thing with this one, fits right over top. So, and there's no you know big metal washer. We can literally just run these out. All right, so check it out, here's the setup. So we've got our ball joint press, we've got the Ride Tech sleeve, and then just this end piece here. And now we can just run it completely out. Let's see if the ratchet has enough torque to get it done. it here's our bushing easy as that let's do this side there it is run it out now you just gonna use scotch bright clean up our bores on both of our bushings all right with the bores cleaned up let's get to our bushings so referencing our instructions you're gonna see here rear lower small and then this one here, rear, lower, large. So we've got, there's the same inside and outside, but there's two different ones for the small one and then two different ones for the large one. So let's get those on there. So here's the two halves for the small one. Get those just into place by hand. Here's the two large. Again, we'll get these in just by hand. So two large are in by hand. Now let's go ahead and press these in. Okay, so we got the ball joint press fitted. Let's run it in. Okay, same thing with this one. So now we need our sleeves. So we're getting down on hardware, so it's a little bit easier to figure out what's what. But if you look over here, you're gonna see which one is which. The last few are kind of easy to figure out because one's longer, one's shorter. And also the inner bore is different as well. So this one goes on the very rear and this one's the front one. This is a little bit larger for the eccentric bolt. So that means that this is gonna be this one and then this is gonna be this one. So we'll get those two pressed in there. What I mean by that is this bolt that goes in the rear you can see it's a smaller bolt, whereas the eccentric bolt is a larger bolt. So that's an easy way to tell which one's which. All right, let's get our sleeves in there, run them in. Same thing as the other one. There she goes. All right, so both of our bushings on our lower control arm are installed. Pretty straightforward. I really like that method. You could, you know, it's you're just one ball joint away from taking the whole arm off, but it's just one less thing you have to do. And this actually gives you a decent like stand and mounting point. So why not? So anyways, that's done. We'll go ahead, we'll swing this back in and we'll put this up, put our bolts back in. And uh, that's pretty self-explanatory, but let's put everything back up and in and then let's work on the uppers. In this rear bolt right here, there is a bolt in the kit that we've got to replace with and I'll show you why. So here's the factory bolt. You'll notice here it goes very skinny in the middle and doesn't maintain the actual diameter the whole way through. So we're going to discard these and we're going to install these upgraded bolts and they also come with the nuts. So make sure you put these in, otherwise this rear arm will be sloppy in there. We use this dead blow to kind of get things situated. The other thing we can do too is we can install our eccentric bolt which would make more sense to do it this way that way 
we don't have to finagle it. So we can install it that way and put our washer and nut on the backside. That way we don't have to try to slip it past the tank anymore. So we'll tighten all our hardware and then you can reinstall the shock bolt and then let's tackle this upper control arm. Okay, let's go ahead and get this upper control arm out of here. So we've got an 18 here and an 18 over here. The nut is welded to the chassis, so we just need to zip those off and then we can swing this upper control arm out. All right, and then we can rotate the upper control arm here so we can work on it. You could just split the ball joint, you guys. It's not that much more extra work, but again, it's not completely necessary. We can do it here, so however you wanna do it, but I'm gonna go ahead and do it right here. All right, so this is from our ball joint press kit. This fits beautifully over top. Don't need to trim any of the excess off our bushing, which is nice. And then we'll just run this in. And that's it. Same procedure on this one, a little less room to work with, but can still get it done. So I'm just gonna go ahead, I can't really jam the camera in here with uh, myself. So I'm gonna go ahead, just pop this one out, same procedure as here. And then uh, we'll get onto the new bushings. One thing you can do is choose to work through this bushing and press that way. So it offers you a little bit more room as well. So we can do this and it probably is a little bit easier, honestly, than trying to, you know, get all into the wheel well and press outwards. So we can press inwards as well. There's the other bushing. Back this off. Okay, so there's the other bushing. So I'm gonna go ahead and clean up these two bores right here. Okay, so bores are all clean. Let's get the bushings. So here we go. I've already done the passenger side, so it's pretty straightforward. There is a different bushing for the frontmost one versus the rear. So you can see here rear, upper, small, and then this one. So just look here, front of vehicle is shown. So this is the direction of the vehicle. We need two number nines. Go down to nine. That's 118. So we need two of these for the front most one. So let's get those situated. So this is gonna be the control arm closest to the front. So let's press these two in. So here's the setup. We're gonna work through this portion of the arm and we'll drive that home. The two collars are the same for both the rear upper control arms. So we'll go ahead and get this in. We'll press this in as well. So our sleeve is in place. Let's go ahead and we'll get this rigged up. Let's just get that fine a little bit in. There we go. All right, so we're on the very last one, so we don't even have to look at the instructions at this point. We can take these out of here. We'll put those in the last joint and there's our bushing. So they're both the same on both sides. Run the sleeve back in. Drive in the last little bit. Perfect. All right, so our bushings are all installed, you guys. So I'm gonna rotate this back in. Kinda have to pull this out at the same time, but as you pull this out, rotate your upper control arm in and put our bolts back in. Okay guys, so all the bushings are all installed front and rear. Just make sure you check all of your hardware, make sure everything is tight. What we're actually doing right now is I'm not going to be putting this in and I'll show you guys why, because we are also upgrading everything on this. We're not only upgrading to just Ridetex Delrin bushings, so we're getting that added chassis stiffness, but we're also replacing all the suspension and we're upgrading the sway bars as well to Ridetex larger ones. Let me show you. So check this out, you guys. We're also putting these massive Ridetex front and rear sway bars. So if you guys are interested in this, definitely hit the subscribe button and check out the other videos. I'll also link them down below for you guys. And we're also installing Ridetex TQ coilover setup. So this is going to completely replace the mono leafs on the front and rear. The remote reservoir is going to give us a ton of adjustability because we are going to be tracking and racing this car. And this is going to give us the ultimate performance that we're looking for. 
So thanks for watching guys. I will link all the products that we use down below as well as the tools to get the job done. And also I'll link down below the sway bar videos and our other video for our coilovers. There's a bunch of different options for you guys over at Ride Tech, different levels of suspension as well. So if you want just a good daily driver and you wanna improve the handling, they also got you covered over there. So you don't have to go with the all out race coilovers, but lots of options. So I'll link them down below for you guys. Give this video a thumbs up, subscribe if you haven't already. We'll catch you guys on the next video.